Hey guys, uh, this is Akshay Sura. Uh, today we'll be use we'll be um, working on creating a contact facet in XDB, and uh, we will be using XConnect and Sitecore 9 Magic to do that. Uh, so essentially, what we want to do um, is we want to be able to create a facet. Um, we'll create another type of facet called as an interaction facet and we'll go over what each of these are. We'll generate the model, we'll see how we can update XConnect to recognize those, and then we'll build a sample application which we will um, use to update um, the existing contacts facet and we'll go through all of this. Okay, so uh, first thing is, uh, what's a contact facet? Contact facet is um, something in addition to the actual contact. So like uh, the contacts, uh, first name, last name, email, and all of that stuff is stored in the personal information facet. So anything which directly tags to the contact is a contact facet. Uh, an interaction facet, we'll see how to define it, but we won't necessarily use it because in order for us to use it, we have to define an event and an outcome uh, inside of Sitecore in order for us to use that and we'll get to it at some point. Um, uh, so an interaction facet is what exactly happens. So in my case, it is when someone has used points um, to uh, pay for an order or when someone has um, earned points for the first time, things like that is based on the customer's interaction. Um, and essentially, that's what we'll be doing uh, today. Uh, big thanks to the queen of documentation, uh, Martina. She's done an amazing job in uh, getting us all the documentation we need. Uh, I really, there is no way I could have done it without proper documentation. Um, saying that uh, again mr beard or uh, longhorn taco or jason mulkerson he was kind enough to help me um, i was looking at his blog post and he got on goat meeting to help me out so obviously we got to give credit where credit's due uh, i will post this link on on the blog post but it really it goes through a whole bunch of documentation, including creating sample applications, how to register um, facets for existing client, existing contacts, new contacts. It's amazingly great documentation. I can't talk enough about that. Okay, so first what I did is I just have a class library, just created some folder structure, don't really have to uh, necessarily follow it. Um, this is the interaction facet. It looks exactly the same as a contact facet, except the way you register it would be different. In this case, what I'm trying to do is when someone uh, places an order uh, which involves points, we want to be able to uh, capture that as an interaction for that um, contact. Again, I'm not using it, but just to define it, so I need the order ID, what the total was, and what the uh, points uh, which were used uh, for that. Um, the second thing, which is what is more important, is the, the contact facet. So this facet is directly tacked onto the uh, contact, and then uh, we want to know for that contact what were the points earned and what were the points spent. If um, you guys have been following what I've been doing, which is I've been doing commerce um, for the past God knows how long, but anyways, um, we are trying to store the loyalty points for the uh, customers in commerce. So what we're trying to do is since we extended the customer to store the points earned and the points spent, we want to be able to store this information inside XDB as well because we would get um, we can add on the ability to do personalization based on uh, those uh, piece of information. So this is something we want to uh, do it in the future. So I'm setting it up right now. So we created a new facet and I'm going to post all of this code onto actually GitHub right after this because this is a small application for me to push it. So we want to call the facet loyalty points facet. We have two attributes. Um, so both are integers, points and points spent. This is pretty much what we want. 
So the other thing um, I wanted to do was to be able to add uh, yet another facet. This I've already registered, uh, I've already included it, I've done a whole bunch of work on it, but I want to do something new. So I have a need for uh, another uh, another facet. So I'm going to try to add that right now. So I'm going to go ahead and add a new class. I want to call it uh loyalty commerce um facet so loyalty commerce facet and i'm gonna go ahead uh, basically i need um, uh, um i need the customer id I'm just actually change it to commerce customer ID. So essentially, the reason I need this facet is um, by default, uh, when uh, you know when the commerce engine stores customers, it does not store the. Um, there's a concept called as identifiers. So let me just bring this in. There's a concept called as identifiers, and essentially, what that means is that um, what do you want to identify your users by? And this is an encrypted field value so that unless you have the certificate uh, with XConnect, you can um, unencrypt it. But essentially, uh, what, what are you going to use to um, bring back these users, right? Like, uh, what are you going to use to query these users um, if you want to pull someone? And essentially, I didn't see um, anything which uh, needs to uh, identify itself by the commerce customer ID. So that's something which we will add as an identifier. But at the same time, I think it will be nice to tag the customer ID of the um, of the contact. So let me have a look. This is a commerce user. This might have already been done, by the way. So let me just uh, double check. Uh, so this guy right there, the GDPR connection string info, has a value of the customer, but I don't see any anything where I can clearly pull information on. So I'm just going to go ahead and add it anyways. Um, so let's leave it as that. Okay, so I have it ready. So essentially it's pretty small. Uh, as you can see, we inherited facet. Um, we're calling it loyalty commerce facet. Um, and then just to show you guys, and uh, this always bugs me when I'm looking at someone else's blog post is, you don't know where the references came from. So go ahead uh, to NuGet, make sure you pull in. So right now I just have the XConnect collection model, uh, no references and search at this moment in time. Uh, so once you're done with that, uh, you need to add a model. So essentially what I did is, and again, all of this code is available in the, in the documentation. Um, so essentially we added uh, the model, we specify the name of the model. Uh, we also uh, are defining the facet. So here, uh, essentially we specified it's a contact facet and then it's load depends facet interaction. Uh, but we, uh, need to add let's go ahead and do that so it's a contact facet and this is low d commerce facet uh, keys so let's get to facet keys right here and just add it in Okay, um, so essentially we registered it at this moment in time. So this is what will build things. So once this is all done, we need um, a small application which will basically convert this into a JSON, which we will dump into um, dump into XConnect for it to recognize. That's what we'll do next. Okay, so now um, add another uh, con like a console-based app. Um, so here, um, the documentation doesn't really go into depth. Uh, it just mentions the XConnect and client and model, but uh, when you're trying to build it uh, and use it and things like that, you will get into 
um, issues where it says you need to add the interactive async and providers. So here's what it is. So you can take a look at it. Um, and then this is, uh, these are all the um, NuGet packages I had to download for it. So here, essentially what we're doing is we're generating the JSON version of the model to dump into uh, the XConnect instance. So here it's nothing fancy. We are getting the model. Um, we're calling uh, the method XDB model writer and passing in the model to it and specifying a location. So once we run this, it basically creates the JSON for that particular thing, a particular model. I made this as the primary um, uh, project at this moment and I'm going to run it right now. Okay. Um, so it basically went ahead and created the model. Let's go take a look uh, what the model has. Okay, so we opened up the model. It's uh, done its job. It's created the two contact facets, uh, the interaction facet, um, and uh, all the metadata it needs in order to do it. Uh, what we'll do at this moment in time, um, once that's taken care of, is we are going to copy this model uh, from from the temporary location we created, and then we are going to put it in X. Okay, so what we did is we replaced so your wherever your XConnect uh, website is, app data models, dump it in there. And once you do that, um, just uh, restart your IIS uh, instance uh, just to make sure it picks it up. Uh, and then what we're going to do next is we'll write a small application which is going to go through and it is going to update an existing um, contact with the, the new contact facet we added. So again, we added uh, another uh, console app. Um, we have a whole bunch of um, whole bunch of references in here. Uh, so again, all, the code is all available on on the documentation on the XConnect doc. So it's nothing magical I created. Um, pretty new to XConnect myself. So these are all the references, and again, I'll post it there. Uh, just make sure you have it for, otherwise you end up running into weird um, errors uh, from time to time where it won't pick it up, uh, things like that. So just make sure that um, you you satisfy all the things the XConnect needs. And I have to say it's actually very uh, surprisingly very, very easy in order for you to get this done. Uh, the other thing I also mentioned, I think Jason mentioned this as well, is um, keeping the model separate in another separate project is useful because depending on if you use this on the website uh, end of it or even like the commerce engine, which we'll look at next, it's easier to refer to um, that library if it's separated. So in here, um, I um, copied most of the code um, from the, uh, from the, um, what do you call, uh, from the documentation. Uh, a couple of things to note is you need your thumbprint. Uh, I will tell you where to get that from without having to scratch your head too much. Uh, and then you need the URIs where your XConnect website is running. And that's pretty much it. And then we'll look at the code um, right now. So the easiest way to get the thumbprint without really having to try too much is uh, basically open your connection strings.config for your site core 9 website. Uh, look for uh, one of the XConnect um, you know, certificate uh, value in there and you get the thumbprint right there. So you don't really have to do you know, crazy things like going into the certificate manager or anything like that. All right, so once you have that, um, pretty much this code is what it is. So essentially what we're doing here is, uh, like I mentioned, the, uh, there's a couple of ways to bring a user in uh, or pull up a user. Uh, one is by an identifier, which we will get into um, shortly by looking up a user based on a, a specific identifier, which is actually this. But um, there's another way. If you know the actual contact ID, you can pull someone up by the contact ID as well. So here, basically, what we are saying is, uh, bring me everyone who has you know the identifier commerce user so all commerce users have the commerce user identifier it's basically the domain and the username of the commerce user in this case storefront and my email address 
uh, and then we are pulling that contact um, right here um, and then essentially the couple of things is we want to expand so this is the the concept as you're working with commerce and X connect you'll get into this so as we're bringing the user because all of this uses OData, and OData gives you the option of uh, looking into the object you're bringing, and then it'll, it'll let you expand. So if you're bringing an order, you can expand the lines, and if the lines have components, you can expand the uh, components inside of them. It's same exact way. We're pulling a contact, but I want to also expand um, the what do you call contact facets for the personal information and the, the loyalty and that's what we're doing and if we get that contact if we're able to pull it essentially we're trying to see if, we, if the current per, current contact has a loyalty um, points facet if they do um, uh, you know if they don't then we're basically adding adding one just because we wanted to uh, you know make sure that it's doing what it's supposed to if they uh, do it's not going to do anything but the same exact thing will modify this code a little bit uh, because this is on all the commerce uh, users but let's try adding the the commerce facet and then see what comes off of it so here uh, what we're going to do is let's uh, So let's do that. So um, we are going to expand the commerce facet as well. Um, we'll check if the commerce facet for this user exists. If it doesn't, we will um, add one uh, with this ID. So before we do that, uh, I want to double check and make sure that this guy does not have it and show it to you guys too. Yeah, the other thing to mention is this multiple shards and it's kind of depending on who you're trying to query it might end up in one or the other so it's kind of like uh, you have to write queries to bring um, the users you're interested in okay so this is the guy we want um, right now as you can see there's 11 records there's uh, nothing which involves the commerce uh, loyalty commerce there's, there's a lot of loyalty points facet there but not the commerce one so let's run through it I have a breakpoint right here. I'm going to make sure that this is the startup project. I will go ahead and run it. Uh, we hit the breakpoint, so essentially, let's go through it. Let's see if it finds the uh, contact. It should. So we have the contact. And if you look at the facets, there's only two which we are interested in, in the ones we expanded. One is personal information, the other one is loyalty points. Um, it is going to skip that one, but let's see. So this one should be null. So essentially we're creating a new one in here. We are essentially setting the uh, commerce customer ID to 001. We set the facet, we hit submit, and then that part um, should be taken care of. We come back here. We rerun it, and as you can see right here, we have the commerce facet and the customer ID is 001. Of course, we don't want it to be 001, but something we will make sure that we uh, set appropriately once we do the commerce code for this. But essentially, what this shows you is, you know, adding a facet is actually very simple. We didn't really have to do a lot in order to add the facet and get it into XConnect. Again, remember, once we get this into um, once we get this into the, uh, the XConnect portion of it, depending on what you're dealing with, or if you're dealing with uh, the website end of it, you have to write code there in order to consume that. Um, again, credit goes to these two for helping me out. Um, Sidecore Stack Exchange, always an amazing tool for you to use uh, to ask questions, get answers from smart people. Uh, and then also Sidecore Slack, where uh, you know there's a bunch of people in the XDB uh, channel who are willing to help you. Um, and um, thanks again.